Everything we've done with dimensions so far has been using a format that is called a dynamic style of constraint. And that means that we're just really concerned with how this thing functions. Uh, where is this tied in terms of geometry? What's its parameter name and, and what's its value? But we haven't worried about the cosmetics of it. it. It's really not annotational. It's not something that's going to show up on our drawing. And in fact, these will not be plotted by default. So what we need to do now is look at how to change this form over into something that is called an annotational dimension constraint. That way we've got control over how it looks, its cosmetics, and it is actually something that would in fact plot. So what we'll do is take this dimension, simply click it, and as you can see I've brought up my properties manager over here, and sure enough the form of this reports as being dynamic. What we can do right now is click this down and turn it into annotational. And immediately you're going to notice a few changes when this occurs. I'll go ahead and escape out so we can see the entity more clearly. What we see now is that we've actually got something that is using our default dimension styles. So we saw tick marks show up. Now we're still seeing the parameter and the value format but our text fonts and everything else about this is behaving annotationally. So I'll go ahead and click it again and we'll look at its properties. And now what we start to see is that, yeah, all these kind of annotational parameters that we're used to thinking about now matter. So we could now apply dimension style overrides, all that kind of uh, information is now valid. So it's very straightforward to do this. Now, the one thing about this that still isn't cosmetically appealing is that we're seeing the parameter and the value here, and that's probably not how we want an annotative dimension to really look. So let's make the trick back up here to our constraint settings, and we'll go ahead and look at our dimensional display, and we'll probably want to set that to simply value. Okay, that, and now we see things that are, are annotational in nature. This is now something that could plot on my drawing, and, and it would look fine. So the choice then becomes, how do you really want to work? Do you want to work with these dynamic style constraints or do you want to work with these annotational style constraints? Because that brings up the discussion of which one should be default. And if you load AutoCAD 2012 out of the box, you're going to see that the dynamic form is what's default. Let me call your attention to a system variable that's called C constraint form. By default out of the box, you're going to see this is set to zero so that all your dimensions come in as dynamic constraint styles. If you wanted to change that to one, then everything would default to annotational, which looks like this one. So if you want to make this a permanent change, the recommended workflow would be open your template file and set this value to one so that every time you create a dimensional constraint from your toolbar up here, you'll get annotational as default form. Now, as far as controlling these annotational parameters, you feel free to use any of the types of controls, dimension variables. You can park this on whatever layer you want so that you can visually control it just like you would any other dimension. The only way you're ever going to know that this is actually a parametric dimension is the little lock icon. And don't worry, that won't plot. So pretty straightforward to control whether they're dynamic or annotational. Just need to know one particular system variable. You can go look that up in your help system. Other than that, just try it, and I think you'll find it straightforward to use.